Hey guys, so I wanted to do my final check-in with you for my elimination. I feel overall that it was very successful, although I guess I was hoping for more weight loss. I did lose six pounds and that was since January 2nd. Hmm, not too bad. My blood sugar when I initially checked it on January 2nd was 222 and it's trending in the 150s. Now, I would have expected, and I guess my doctor too, because we discussed this at my last visit, I would have expected my blood sugars to have gotten back down into a normal range because of the foods I'm eating. Um, so anyway, that didn't happen quite like I expected and it's still fluctuating quite a bit. So some days it'll be, you know, I've been as low and I've been, the only lowest I've been is 144, I think, but it'll still be up in the 170s. So <clears throat> I'm not quite where I want to be with that. I have lost um, two inches from my waist, which is really good. So I'm going to go from here. Um, and this is my takeaway from the elimination. Um, I discovered that I'm pretty sensitive to corn, which I was not expecting at all. And so that's probably been the source of a lot of my GI issues. I also had some issue with soy, I think. So I'm just gonna leave those two out. Gluten, I didn't wanna add fully back anyway because I know I felt really bad when I was eating a lot of gluten. So while I, do, I think I only am sensitive to gluten and I can eat some without any problem, I didn't have, any, I didn't have hardly any, if any, reactivity to the einkorn. So it's a very ancient grain that has been around since way before they started doing all the processing that they do now to the wheat products. So I'm going to stay with making my own bread, um, using that to make other things that we want, like if we want to have pizza or if we want to, you know, we've even, we've even talked about making our own pasta with it. So I'm going to try to use this flour and that be the main source of our stuff and it's going to be all homemade. So I'm pretty happy with that, but I am going to limit it. Um, I'm gonna try not to have more than a serving a day for sure. A lot of times what I get into when messes me up a lot is I'll, I'm not really good about planning out. Like if I'm gonna have toast for breakfast, I don't need to plan leftover pasta for lunch and then, you know, something else like that for, for supper. So I'm gonna try to be really a lot more mindful of how I combine things during the day. Dairy. I didn't really have a lot of trouble with. I had some mild reaction, I guess. It's not something that I don't normally drink milk anyway. I'm gonna leave off the half and half because I was having that every day. So I'm just gonna stay with the ripple. I really like it. I suggest it if you're trying to go, you know, if you're trying to limit your dairy, it is an excellent choice and their half and half is good. I use it in my frother and it's almost the same to me as the half and half that I was using the dairy, the dairy. So I'm not going to just absolutely stay away from cheese. I really like the goat cheese products that um, I've been getting at Sprouts. So I'm going to try to keep those on hand. My husband likes those as well. The only problem with the goat cheese is the packaging is so small. So like, let's say you wanted to make lasagna. I mean, it would take a lot of packages of that cheese to actually make a full-size lasagna. So I'm not gonna say I'm not ever gonna have regular cheese because I probably will. But I, again, I'm gonna be very careful with that. I'm gonna limit that, um, try to emphasize more the goat's cheese for the routine basis. And, and really and truly, I'm gonna try to just stay really clean, like meat, proteins, vegetables. I didn't have any trouble with butter, so I'm gonna use butter. So that checks off, of course, sugar, um, I'm trying to eliminate anyway. Now I'm having a little bit of honey in the morning, one teaspoon in my coffee, and sometimes I'll have tea later in the day. Um, I'm trying to be very mindful of keeping it very limited on the sugar because I don't need that. I don't need sugar with my current issues. So, I really feel good about what I learned from the elimination diet. I would highly recommend it if you are stuck at a plateau in your weight loss or if you're just having trouble getting started or if you're having any issues like health issues. It's a really good place to start to see if food is playing any kind of role in any problems you might be having. So, from here, I'm just going to try to maintain a healthy diet, see if I can continue to lose weight. I've seen a lot of fluctuation in my weight. I don't know. 
we'll see. So another thing I want to talk about, kind of where I'm going from here. I got my lab results. So I ended up being sick uh, a couple weeks ago. I went in, had a fever, tested negative for COVID. I think I told you guys all that. Well, I was supposed to have gone back and followed up. The holidays kind of got me off track. So I ended up making an appointment on that Monday with my PCP and had a ton of lab work drawn. It came back with some things that are just weird and I don't know how to put together. So like I'm taking vitamin D supplement every day and I understand it's winter. I'm getting no sun right now. And, and I know the sun plays a big role, but it's actually gone down. So I just don't know. I don't know what to do about that. I've, I'm, I've ordered a different brand of vitamin D. I don't know. I'm just frustrated with that. Also, my cortisol level was like bottom of the barrel. So in the morning, typically your cortisol should be at its max in the morning and then it kind of cascades down throughout the day. That's not the way mine is. It starts out really low. So I don't know if that has something to do with why I feel so anxious when I first get to work and why I'm having all of these, I'm having tons of palpitations still. And so I'm waiting to, to hear back from my doctor. Of course, we've had a huge winter storm here and, and I've not been able to hear from her. But throughout this, I've decided I'm also anemic. I didn't mention that. Where did that come from? Like, what? <laughs> like I'm eating healthier than I've ever eaten in my life and I don't have a period anymore, so I should not be anemic, but I am. And I looked up those symptoms and I am having a ton of symptoms from, from anemia too. So I just don't know what's going on in my body. Things are just not right. I feel like until I get those issues addressed, I'm not gonna drop the weight like I should. So I had thought about doing the 5R program but I feel like I'd already kind of done that. So what that means is you're trying to heal leaky gut, which may be what I have, I don't know. But you're trying, you know, you eliminate everything and then you try to regrow and repopulate based on that. Well, I feel so overwhelmed with what to do with that when I, when I do the research that I finally just decided I was gonna do a functional medicine consult. And so I've done that and I'm excited to bring you guys along on that journey. I initiated it yesterday. It is quite expensive. I'm not, I mean, it, and it's not covered by insurance. I'm hoping that if there's any additional labs I need that they can be covered by my insurance. But the, the consultation, I actually bought into a membership. So I'll get like a year long health plan. I feel like I need help and guidance. I'm just lost as to where to go now. So I'm gonna let you guys in on this journey with me and kind of bring you along and let you know if it's worth the value, if it's, if it's a valuable thing. Is, is it really worth the, the money that's charged? I have personally held on, especially while going through my health coaching program, that everyone should have a, a functional medicine checkup every year because they look at things in such a different way than conventional medicine. They start at the very so base cellular level, not waiting until you have full-blown symptoms to address something that's out of balance. So I have my consult tomorrow, so I'll be sure and let you guys know how that goes and kind of tell you, I had to fill out a ton of paperwork last night, a lot of health history and all my current symptoms. I felt like a hypochondriac to be honest. I'm excited, I'm really, really excited. I just know that something's gotta give I don't know what to say, but something's got to give. Uh, I've got to feel better. So let me just say, as I close on this elimination chapter of these vlogs, that um, I'm going to keep checking in with you guys periodically. I'm going to probably cut back and wait only once a month. I'm going to stop sticking my finger every day. I can guarantee you that because I'm not seeing a lot of fluctuation in that. It's just not changing and until I get something going. So what I may do next is get one of those uh, things that go in your arm that Libre thing where you can have a constant assessment of your blood sugar. Since I'm going to do the functional medicine thing, I'm going to wait and do that first. So that's going to be my, my next step. This one's a pretty lengthy vlog and I'm sorry for that, but I wanted to do a wrap up of the elimination diet and I welcome questions below. If you guys have anything or if you're wanting to start your own elimination, I can sure help set that, help you with how to set that up. So whatever the next step is for you, um, if there's anything I can do to help or support you, just let me know. So I'm going to end off here and I'll see you guys in my next vlog.